Hello, hello everyone, Sire here. Thank you so much for joining me. This is the first video of 2022, and I'm getting right into the Valentine spirit. That's all that's been going through my head. And it just fit perfectly because the new Kendra card challenge number five has been released earlier this year, at the beginning of the year, <clears throat> and I decided to create some Valentine cards using these sketches. Each sketch will be in the top right-hand corner, and I will try my best to follow them. Sometimes I don't, and I'll explain why as I go through. Um, this paper is the Simple Stories Sweet Talk pattern paper, and I got this in my Simon Says card kit for February of 2021, which was last year. I never got a chance to using it, so I thought it was perfect to use this um, for this card kit so that I can get it out of my stash and have room for more pattern paper that I can buy. Um, I also included some cardstock that I got from Black Friday from Tonic Studios and um, I use that mainly for the back. Right now I'm using it as um, the back mat of this card and I have three shades of pink and I, I pretty much just switch between them. The reason I like them is it's the first time I've actually started using linen texture cardstock. I usually only have smooth on hand, so I just like to have the extra texture on the cards. And also you'll notice that for some reason my computer is glitching again, so you'll see periodic disturbance in the video. I think it's only the first two cards that really show it, um, so hopefully that doesn't bother you too much. I need to figure out what's happening um, with the setup that's causing that. So for the first card, just following the sketch pretty closely, and I am using the embellishments that came in this kit. Um, the Black Sentiment XOXOXO is a Tim Holtz um, sticker embellishment kit. I don't think it came with the February kit. Uh, I just happened to have it on hand, and it had the, that sentiment, which made me think of those candy hearts. So I decided to add that. It is black and bold, but I like that. And of course, then I stamped those little heart images from the stamp set and just glue those on. <clears throat> so yes, that was card number one. <laughs> okay, card number two. This is kind of a fun kit, uh, a sketch to play with. I did cut a hole in my base because I used that as a matte layer for my sentiment. And I'll just fill that in with another piece of scrap paper. Just on the right hand side where you just cannot see is just a pile of scraps that I accumulated while making these cards. And there we go, glitch, glitch, glitch. Um, and if you look closely, you can see the, the texture of that background, it's this pink um, Tonic Studios. I'm not sure which color it is offhand, but on Black Friday, they had a bundle. You get 10 of them for a, a cheaper price than normal, I guess. I don't really pay attention, but I decided to buy it and I'm actually very happy with their, their paper. It's actually really nice. And um, so I might get some more, we'll see. This pattern paper works really nicely together. I, I love it when that happens. Sometimes you get a pattern paper that s just doesesn't seem to want to work together. Even though it's matching paper, this it's just too busy or too plain or something. But I like this one, this, this the little hearts. But again, once the, I do have Valentine's on my head. So everything Valentine's is looking super, super awesome. Um, so maybe that's why. Pulling out some Love From Lizzie stickers, deciding which color I want to use. And um, this one is like a translucent pink, so it has some glitter in it as well. Um, I, they did have a sale just before Black Friday, I think, around that time for free shipping. I do recommend that you check that out if you like these products, um, because it definitely makes it worthwhile to save on the shipping. But yeah, I missed it. Anyways, I, I used the pink one and it looks, it matches pretty nicely with the, that, especially that first layer on the top. And then the stamp, Love You Forever and Ever, is from the February 2021 card kit for Simon Says. Pretty much all the stamps are. And then I just happened to have these heart dies and I'll be using that throughout all the cards pretty much. I just really like them like them, they're very simple and they have that beautiful little stitch mark on them. And uh, I pretty much just cut the two shapes and overlap them. That seems to be the style I like for this year anyways. And um, 
I decided to use the blue that matches somewhat the hearts, candies on the bottom, and then a pink just to tie it all together. Love you forever and ever. And then get my Spectrum Noir Sparkle Shimmer Pen and just fill in those hearts. And that will finish card number two. Card number three. I did cut a hole in two because I'm going to use them both as my sentiment. And this one also is using that card stock from Tonic Studios as my mat. Put that down that has the nice texture, linen texture, sorry. And then this is just a plain of a piece of plain white cardstock, which I believe is from Michaels. It's their recollection collection, recollection collection. Um, and I use that a lot for, cause it doesn't have much thickness to it. So it works perfectly if you want to add a white layer without too much um, heaviness. I don't find it very good for stamping on though. I do it sometimes, but you'll know when I do it because you'll start seeing the ink kind of blend or bleed, sorry. Um, so I usually use it just for layering, for matting. And then adding another layer of, I think it's called Wild Cherry. Um, I have a big bag of smooth cardstock that came from all the different kits. And this includes Simon Says, um, uh, Spellbinders, and even back to Scrapping for Less when they were creating kits. So I have a big bag of cardstock I just haven't used up. And so I don't know the names of the colors anymore, but this looks like a wild cherry if I were to give it a name. These three colors look really nice together. If you're not familiar with Kendra Card Challenge, what it is, and it's like you take six sheets of six by six pattern paper. I personally like the double sided because then you have options and you follow their instructions to cut all the pieces and then you create the cards, which I have in the top right hand corner. And I actually don't think about which pattern paper will go together when I do it. I just say, here are my sheets and I'm going to follow the instructions. That is why sometimes I cannot follow the card sketch exactly because even though the instructions clearly state which direction the paper is going to be shown on the card, I don't pay attention to that. Um, so anyways, you follow the instructions and you glue it together. So the reason I'm saying that is because this actually turned out really nice. I love the big red polka dotted paper and then the two accents on the side. It turned out really nicely um, and that wasn't planned. You could plan it. You could put them all aside and really think about it before you cut it, but I like the surprise. Um, if you know me well enough, you'll know that I love random unknown surprises and so when things aren't planned and they look good, it's, it is so worth it. <laughs> so that's just a little insight on me <laughs> and what I like. So I believe this is what, card number four now? This one was kind of a fun, a fun design. Normally these cards don't have more than two or three pieces. And this one has, um, what's that, seven, seven pieces. So that was kind of fun, um, really full of pattern paper. I did flip the one with the blue background because that's not the sheet I cut, but because the hearts were sh facing, oh no, that was, um, sorry, I didn't want too many grid. That's what it was. I didn't like the two plaids together. So I flipped it and that gave me some of the blue that matches in the grid. Um, so that's why I say I like to use double-sided pattern paper because then you have options if it doesn't look good to you. <laughs> Let's put it that way. Using some Love From Lizzie stickers and I'm just going to fill in those lines. I am not following the sketch exactly because I decided to have it, um, the layers swapped. I wanted, I didn't want two big layers on the same side. So I swapped it just to get something a little different, but overall the design is pretty close to being the same. The stamp I super like you was from the Simon Says 2021 card kit. Like I said, for all the stamps, I am using that. And the ink that I'm using is a pink. Let me just, let me just grab that. It is pink fresh. I believe it's bubble gum. I think that's what it is. 
and then I'm just going to put the banners on trying to follow the design as best I can. The banners are a little bit off and the reason for that is because when I started this challenge I accidentally picked card challenge number one instead of five and so I had started cutting the sheets up in the wrong template. Um, luckily I was able to salvage that but <coughs> excuse me but some of the sheets are off in dimensions because of that. So the banners are a little bit off. And, um, but that's the nice thing is it really doesn't matter. You're, you're still following the, the card sketch as best you can. And you're still doing a Kendra challenge, <laughs> but, um, I did, you're not, you don't want to waste paper. So that's what, that is what happened. And you might see it here and there because I think I cut two sheets wrong. And then I just had to salvage the paper and try to find where I can fit them. Okay, what's this? Card number five. This one's fun. Um, I have, um, I think it's a Darius uh, 3D heart folder or um, embossing folder. And so I took a piece of that white recollection paper from Michael's and I just embossed that with those hearts and I really liked it. This is not part of the design of the sketch, but because the sketch is very, very bare, I decided to take a chance or take the opportunity to... Um, to use it. I don't have many Valentine supplies yet. So what I did was I took all my Valentine stuff, threw them in front of me. And of course, then it creates so much inspiration because I see it in front of me and then I go and play with it. And then you get things like this where you're actually using something you didn't even remember you had. But I really like it. It's a nice subtle, it's not a six by six embossing folder. So you have, you, that's pretty much the biggest size I can get. Um, which was why it worked pretty nicely with this card because, um, like I said, it's such a bare design that you can use the different uh, sizes without taking away from the sketch. I'm just adding a little, a uh, little height onto the left and right just so that it's not sagging. And the sentiment, you make my heart smile. Really cute. That is also Pink Fresh ink, and I believe that one was called Raspberry Bliss, if you are interested in that. These inks are pretty nice. Um, Pink Fresh is, they're the only colored inks I really have other than Distress. And that was because I was looking for a collection, and Pink Fresh was the only one that had all the collections available. I don't know, people seem to love their inks, and um, if you want to buy a collection of one company, I don't know, for me, I had the hardest time because half of it is missing. Um, so I think when they go for sale, people just buy them all up. That's what it seems like. Okay, card number six. For this sketch, I found another little die that I had just received. I think it was part of my Black Friday um, video. And so I wanted to play with that. And that's that crisscross grid you see in the background in red. I also, this pattern paper came with some cut aparts. And so I decided to cut one of them up into a sentiment. And then I took out the cupcake in the image as well. And I'm going to use that as an embellishment. Because I did create a little bit of matting layers, my, my sheets are overhanging. So I decided to trim those down. And then next I'm going to take some red glitter love from lizzie peel offs i think this is called the pin stripe or the straight I, I, something like that and add those in between each line alternatively you could have just cut out uh, a matte layer in red for example and then follow the sketch exactly how it shows and then you would have the, a very similar uh, style i like using love for lizzie's uh, peel off stickers because they're just a lot of fun to work with I also will use scraps. So if I have any scraps that are skinny like this, I will use those, especially if it's uh, specialty paper, just because I don't want to waste it. And um, it's a good use instead of just throwing it in the garbage. Glue that to my base. This is an A2 size card, as is all of my cards. If I don't say so, um, I don't make anything bigger than that. Um, I haven't got into the slim lines or any of those extremely large cards. I, I like sticking to the small ones. This die did come with the centerpiece, so I'm just using that as stability so that I can glue it right back into the center of this this little grid. I don't know, I like this grid. I, I've, 
I saw it, I bought it, and I didn't... I got it from Simon Says when they had the sale. For, like, all their dyes were 99 cents. Um, or the sale ones. And so I, I bought it, and I'm glad I did, because it is kind of fun just to create a little bit of difference in the card. And I'm really excited to try using it with my Spellbinders card kits, because I like making my cards a little more abstract with them. And this would be a fun little background. So Sentiment says, thanks for being such a sweetie. And then, like I said, I did take out the cupcake, which was part of the sentiment. And I cut that out, and then I'm just going to stick that right back on with some foam tape. And then I'm going to take more of these little hearts that very closely resemble the color of the heart on top of the cupcake. And then to finish it off, I will use some Spectrum Noir Shimmer Pen. And then I will also add a little or three little uh, pearls, kind of like if the sprinkles had fallen off the cupcake. And that finishes that card. On to card number seven. I did pull out some uh, Michael's red foil cardstock. I got this last year, I believe, because I bought their red and white pattern, Christmas pattern paper, and um, this foil paper worked amazing with that. That being said, it also works amazing for Valentine's. And um, so that's why I brought that out. And I didn't want to blind anybody um, with the shininess, so I am only using it as a, a very slight matte layer. If you don't want to waste cardstock, you can always cut out the center of these so that you can use it. Um, but I realize that I rarely ever use it, so. I'm just going to use the whole sheet. That way I don't have to create any scraps to fill in the centers that I had cut out. This die is, a, is an embossing die, and it also came from Michael's two years ago, I believe. And I like how it allows you to see what the color behind is, in this case, the gold or the red foil. This way you don't feel like you're wasting your red foil or your specialty paper too much because even though you do see it as the matte layer on the outside, the hearts will allow you to see it on in the center as well. So you're not wasting, it's actually having a purpose. And I'm just gonna trim that down. I don't want it to be the full size of the card because I'm going to um, cover it on the bottom and I don't want to have too many weird wonky layers. You can do that, you just need to um, always kind of lift everything so that nothing is sagging. This way, I don't have to worry about that too much. I'm just going to center that as best as I can so that all the layers are kind of centered. And then I'm going to add my lifting layer so that when I put down this pattern sheet, it, uh, it's not sagging and it's all perfectly layered on top. Here's an example where I'm using a scrap piece of paper instead of a Love From Lizzie's uh, peel off. And this is the red foil that was a piece that I cut off and I'm just going to Put that across, glue it, and then trim it down to size. It does look a little crooked to me. Um, didn't notice that, <laughs> but when I think when the card's done, you don't. It doesn't look as crooked. I then took another one of these cutaways and used a die or a gift tag die, and I cut that out so that I had the sentiment along with it. And then taking some red and white twine, I'm just going to not tie it, but just do that little. I don't know what you call it. You kind of fold it and tuck it, and then when you pull it, it's it's looped around. <laughs> yeah. And then just do that on the top. I was going to tie it now, but I decided I didn't want to. I want to try something a little different. And you'll see what I'm going to do in a, in a second. Once I take these foam stickers off, or tape off and I stick that up, I'm then going to twist the, the thread into a heart shape. And then what you, what I do is I just carefully glue it down. Um, this thread will will adhere very well. It's not going to lift once the glue touches it. And I'm just going to try to follow the line as much as I can without disturbing um, the pattern of the thread too much. I did end up moving it a little bit, so it kind of ruined the, the nice little heart that I had before. But um, I still like how it turned out. Uh, it's just a little bit of something a little different. Instead of a bow, um, you're just making a, um, a design with the thread and then gluing it down. 
I thought it was kind of kind of fun. I liked it. But as you can see, my heart kind of separated a little bit. I liked it when the two uh, layers were overlapping. To finish off, I did use um, that heart dye on the pattern paper leftovers and then a piece of pink just to tie it in with that pink flower. Um, you could have done red, but I thought the red would be way too much and would be hidden on that heart layer, that pattern paper. Finish it off with some Spectrum Noir shimmer pen on the flowers and the pink heart. And that will be the end of that card. I really like this one. This one's fun. It was fun to make. Next card, I'm going to use that red foil paper again. This is a very simple design. I follow the sketch fairly closely, except I don't use the bow on the bottom. I'm just going to adhere that down. That's my main layer. I could have cut the center out to create the the matte layer for the sentiment, but I had already had some leftovers. And like I said, I, I rarely use this cardstock um, in the year that I had it, so I don't mind. It's just easier and quicker to just not cut the layer, but if you use your specialty paper a lot, I wouldn't waste it. I wouldn't, it's, it can be expensive. Next, I'm just going to add some red Love From Lizzie peel-offs. I'm not worrying about covering the whole side because the sentiment will be covering, that's the right-hand side, but I will cover the full length on the left. Let's trim that off. If you wanted to, you probably could have tucked that behind. Um, oh no, you couldn't, that's on the base. <laughs> that wouldn't look good. Okay, and I'm just going to mat this in two separate layers, a nice white and then the red shimmer. And then you have a very subtle two layer um, mat. I was thinking about making it crooked, but I decided to keep it nice and straight to follow the design exactly. To finish this, uh, this card off, I did take those white hearts from the previous card. Remember I said that um, when I cut them out, I, I keep them in my stash so I can use them. You can't really tell because you can't see a side-by-side -side comparison, but those little hearts that were white, I did dye them with some sponge sugar distressed ink. And then I'm going to adhere them to these darker pink hearts. These darker pink hearts are not a dye. They were something left over from some other project that I just happened to have and I decided to use them because they were nice and small and the little pink hearts are now can fit in the center and instead of those circles in the sketch I'm going to put the hearts there my recommendation is wait for those hearts to fully dry before you pick them up um, I didn't learn the three times I did it <laughs> and I keep I keep trying it and of course the hearts keep sliding and gliding and all that fun stuff and um, I have to keep repositioning it back into place you think I would have learned after the first time but I didn't <laughs> It's because I'm in, I'm impatient. I'm trying to get these cards done um, because I'm recording. If I wasn't recording, I would take the time. So that was that card. Number eight, I believe. Okay, card number nine. I am not following the sketch exactly. First off, don't do what I did. And, uh, you see how I cut the, the square out of that card? I was looking at the sketch and I cut the square like that. I don't know why, it doesn't make any sense. All it did was it made the paper really flimsy and hard to work with. So just cut the square straight uh, if you do that. Don't do it on a diamond. I will be making this card as a landscape instead of a portrait because as I said earlier in the video, you, you should be paying attention to the directions that the paper is going to be showing on the card. And I don't and so the main piece, that red heart, is now facing, would have faced the wrong direction. Um, it, it would be kind of weird looking. Um, so this is where you can get away with just doing whatever you want. I'm still gonna follow the sketch, but just change the orientation of the card. Um, I also didn't use the hearts of the other pattern paper because I decided that's the, it's almost like a Japanese style spring flowers um, it looked better with the red hearts, in my opinion. <laughs> it's, it's all up to you what you like. 
I did use a piece of scrap of that foil paper and put that in the center, even though it will be covered mostly. It's still nice just to add that little bit of layer because when you're looking at the card, you still do see it subtly, even though I am covering for the most part. The stamp, oh, hello there, really cute. Not overly Valentine-y, but it still gets the message across and not be so lovey-dovey. Um, I use that in the center from the Simon Says card kit from February. And then these sequence, these heart sequence also came in that kit. And I'm just gonna fast forward very fast just to show you my thought process of putting them on the card. And then I, I'll just glue them down without showing you. <clears throat> but I was thinking about just having the hearts on the bottom. And then I decided that I would just start adding them to the top and just go all the way around. I'm not a huge fan of the shape of these bigger hearts. They kind of look wonky to me. Uh, so I had a little bit of a hard time getting over that. Uh, my brain was just like, I don't, I don't like the shape of these hearts. I wish they were the same as the small ones. But um, I just went with it and then glued them all down. And then to finish off the card, I took another piece of scrap of that red foil and made a little banner, fish banner on the corner. For card number 10, we're making another simple card. This one, I could use the little mini hearts. It's pretty much the full panel um, as the card design shows. This card design is definitely um, not following it exactly. The main reason is I do not have um, an oval shape stitch. Wait, I said that wrong. I don't have a stitched oval shape um, at all. Uh, the reason I was able to do the oval in my previous card was because I had to use my Cricut machine to cut it. Uh, so I didn't want to... Oh, trying to do stitch marks on a Cricut would be painfully annoying. <laughs> and so I wasn't going to do that. So instead, I am going to just change the shape to a square. And the reason for that is because I am going to use another cutaway from this pattern paper. And the sentiment was blocky. It says hugs and kisses. So the square fit around it perfectly. And then I just matted it with the same layer as the color in the background of the main base of the card. It's this creamy color. I'm just going to add some dimension to make sure that it is lifted over that middle banner there. This card is fairly simple. Um, I did cut the sheets a little bit wonky. Um, I didn't mean to. I wanted those two banners in the middle of the card to be the same length, but I wasn't thinking when I cut it and I just cut it a little too short. And that's why you have this weird um, two layers. It was supposed to be flush right across the whole card, but um, only if you're really, really staring at it, <laughs> maybe you'll notice. <laughs> and then to finish it off, I did add the two hearts. Um, and then I'm going to put another little banner. That's what I'm doing in the corner there. I'm off camera a bit, but I'm just creating a little, a little fishtail banner to add to the right hand side of this card. And of course I will bring up my shimmer pen one more time. I, I really love using the shimmer pen, especially for Valentine's. Valentine's and Christmas seem to be the times I use it the most. I'm just going to go over all the lettering. I fast forward this a little bit just so that it's not too painfully slow. <laughs> there we go. Hugs and kisses. This is probably one of my favorite cards. I just love this sketch. This is a really cute sketch. And when you get pattern paper that just really looks sharp together, this sketch shines. Um, there's a couple of my favorite thing sketches that are similar to this that I just love using. And um, I think the secret is simple and the different layers as long as your layers are complementary um, it just works it's it's almost like a portrait it's like a uh, it's just really clean and if you love things that are symmetrical and orderly this sketch just really pleases that that uh, the eye of <laughs> whatever i'm trying to say so these are the three different shapes i'm just going to glue those on trying to space them perfectly you may notice that the background is that heart embossing. This is just a leftover of another sheet that I had done. And I'm not too worried about covering it for the most part. It's really just going to be a subtle 
noticing background. Um, I'm not wanting it to be too to be too prominent. Just trying to make sure that this is centered, so I have a nice even border of that red bold or the the thick red border. I took a piece of this blue cardstock from my stash, and a reason I chose blue is because there's a little bit of blue in the hearts, but nowhere else, so I wanted to tie it back in and just show at least something more. And then to finish off this very simple, cute card, I'm adding some of these little white gems or pearls. Just put them randomly on this card. <laughs> And there we go. Love this one. Card 12, I am going to use another uh, cutaway, but this time I'm not going to be trimming it up too much because the design or the card sketch actually asks for a very large uh, uh, center sentiment piece. So this worked really nicely, especially because this sentiment is a very long one with it saying, please, please, pretty, pretty, please be mine on the typewriter. Really cute. My blue layer that I'm cutting down, um, it is not the correct size as the sketch. And the reason for this is because I did not want to cut a new sheet of paper just for this. This is a piece of scrap paper and I felt it was, it was good enough. Um, and that's what you should realize with these card sketches. If you have scrap paper that's very similar to this right size, think about using it because you, if you're going to cut up a new sheet, you're just going to create more scraps instead of maybe being able to use that as something else. Um, the most annoying part is when I want to do a full A2 size card in a color, but I had already cut it up into different sizes and now it doesn't fit. So in this case, I didn't want that to happen. So I'm just using a, a piece of scrap that just was good enough. And you can't even really tell that it's not following it exactly. I did lift up that sentiment. All I did was I took three pieces of scrap paper and glued them behind so that it's three layers high. It only creates such a subtle um, difference. And the reason I like doing this is because my foam tape is a little bit thicker and I didn't want to use so much on this card. I could have used f my fun foam, but because I have so many scraps left, I just use scrap paper. I then then cut these flowers out to mimic the ones on the the sentiment, and then I just glue those into different corners, and then that finished off that card. I was thinking about using some shimmer glitter, but I didn't end up using it. For the next card, this is another very simple sketch. Once again, I am going to change the orientation from portrait to landscape because the hearts on this design, once again, were facing the wrong way. If I had followed the sketch, the hearts would have been up and, or would have been facing left and right instead of up and down. Not a big deal. It's, it's still pretty much the exact same design. You're just changing the orientation of it. So never feel like you have to follow the card sketch exactly. You can have fun and change it. Even if, if your paper was perfect, um, you still can do it. Uh, it. It doesn't make a, a huge difference. It's, it's really just to have fun. So always remember that. For my sentiment, I did use one of the cutaways that says, love you a latte. It did have that cup and I cut that out uh, or fussy cut it out and I'm gonna use it as an embellishment like I did with the cupcake on the other card. I'm going to take that sentiment and just um, glue that to the white piece, but I'm going to leave a little bit of a larger white border on the right hand side just for something different. Um, I'm going to cover it with them with the cup, but I just like to have a little bit of a difference. Um, you don't have to do this. You could have had a perfect um, border around it, but sometimes I just get bored of the same thing. And so I just want to change it up. I am going to, once again, do the little trick of adding f paper instead of foam tape. And this time I'm using four layers of scrap cardstock. And I'm just going to prop that up on the right-hand side. And then using some of these little hearts that I had cut out and add them. These ones I use, chose red because they match the color on the, the cup of coffee. 
or latte. <laughs> and then to finish off the card, I'm going to add pearls. I didn't show you in the video because it stopped on me, but I did add shimmers to the hearts and I also add a Love From Lizzie's peel sticker on the border of the bottom to separate it. Um, you'll see that in the, in the end when I re-show all the cards, if you pay attention. <laughs> Okay, for what's this card 14. Okay, this one is super cute. I love this one um, And I'm not showing you the, the centerpiece the sentiment piece um, On camera because I want to make it a surprise. It is something that I've used two years ago and I found it in my stash and I decided to add it to this card It's been a long time just sitting there and I'm very excited to finally use it up. I think they're so adorable anyways this kit, or this sketch, I am not following it exactly. I will not do the circle center piece, nor am I adding any additional layers um, as the, the card kit sh is indicating. I do it my own way. So I have like two layers, matte layers, the pink and the blue, and then the white of the card base showing. And then I'm creating another layer of white that will match the card base. So I'm tying all the white together and then I'm using the pink again for each pattern paper. So it's all over the place. It's not following exactly the card sketch, but it's, it's similar. I'm then going to take a very simple sentiment says, I love you in the corner. And that's going to be my sentiment for this card. And I'm just going to glue that and it should match exactly to the white matte layer, the length of it. Here we go, my little panda. I love him so much. I found him in my stash. I had made him almost two years ago. Maybe it's three now, I'm losing track of time. But I love this guy and I made four of them and I've used them all up, I believe now. And I, he's just a little lazy guy. He's just laying there enjoying, um, enjoying the, the moment. <laughs> he's actually looking at something. So when I realized that I decided I'm going to add um, a little heart to his hand. But first, I'm going to add two hearts to the top, trying to match the blue and the pink of the of the rest of the design of the card. It's I ran out of that darker blue, so I had to use a lighter blue. That's why. Otherwise, I would have used the same. And then I'm going to add the heart to his hand. So he's looking at that. What I forgot to do was stamp it before I put the foam squares on it. So this was a little bit challenging. I took this little one that says, Be Mine. Luckily, it was small enough, and I could just barely just touch it without smudging it. It was it was nice and easy, but definitely challenging trying to stamp on foam squares. I love this card. It's so cute. I, I want to make some more of these little pandas. They're really fun. And then to finish off, I added some pearls. For the last card, once again, I did not follow the sketch. Um, <clears throat> I wanted to try something different. And so I am going to change the orientation once again to a landscape. And this time I'm going to kind of layer these as if they were books on a shelf. Um, that's, that's the idea of it. It's, it's, um, and that's why I put the one to the side, kind of like it's holding the rest of the books up. Even though if these were books, no way would those big thick books fall over <laughs> if you really think about it. But it just creates for a nice little fun design and then I just took a piece of white cardstock or pink cardstock that was scraps and glued that down as almost as if it were the base uh, shelf that the books are sitting on I love the sentiment it came from the Simon Says February 2021 card kit it says like love and adore you and I'm just going to stamp that down with some Versa Fine Claire ink and over the whole thing so it's going to overlap that last book let's say the reason why i decided to go with this length is because i have two pieces of cards pattern paper that have hearts on there facing different directions the white one with all the different mini hearts and then the red one with the tone and tone hearts and so because the red one is harder to see that it's facing the wrong way i decided that it would be easier to hide it if i went landscape versus the other one that's the, the reason. Then that led to me creating this book design because I just 
Um, it just drew, came to me and I decided to go with it. And I was going to heat emboss this with some clear embossing powder. And then to separate the different books, I'm going to use some Love From Lizzie peel off stickers in this really, uh, I'm not sure what kind of blue you would call this. Um, I'm not sure. Steel blue? <laughs> or, or I don't know. Anyways, it's very it's it's not the same blue as in the cards. That's why I decided to go with the skinniest skinniest um, peel off. I also have them in these pinstripes, and so once again, taking the skinniest one and just separating the different uh, sides. I'm only worrying about the white white layers that I'm putting peel offs. I'm not worried about the other ones. And the reason I do this is just to kind of separate each layer. It's just a nice way of just, otherwise they just kind of merge together without a, a, without a separation. You definitely could have done it without it. It would have looked fine. I did use some of my fun foam because it's such a huge layer and decided to prop this up. Because I'm doing white on white, the, when you prop it up, the shadow creates a nice distinction and makes a nice little elegant look to it. To finish it off, I am going to use some more of these stitch hearts and I'm going to place three of them, two red and a blue, and I'm going to put them overlapping on the left side of the sentiment. I am going to need to prop this up a bit because um, it's going to sag. It actually won't sag. It's a pretty thick cardstock. It's 100 pounds. Um, it just will float there. It won't be glued down. And then add another one to the first book. And then I'm going to add a little blue banner, ties all this blue together, and then my shimmer pen to finish off this card. It's a cute little different way of making this card sketch. <laughs> and that's that. So now I'm going to show you all 15 cards in real time and as I do that I just want to say thank you so much for joining me on this adventure of these Valentine inspired cards. I really love this card or these this pattern paper. It's a lot of fun to work with and I also had a lot of fun working with Kendra Card Challenge. This is number five first of 2022. This card challenge is quarterly so every four months a new one will be created. Also take in consideration that there are usually great prizes to be won when you post these on YouTube, Instagram, or Facebook. I think there's other platforms. You need to go to their website. I will link it down into the description below. Um, but it's definitely a lot of fun way, a lot of fun and a great way of using up pattern papers that have been sitting in your stash that you may have not had a chance to go through. Um, that's why I like doing it. And it's also fun just to create cards without thinking too much. For me, when I just want to create some cards with card sketches, I don't have to think too much. I just follow the sketch and I just have fun creating. Whereas if I were to color and make designs, it's a lot more effort to think of something and, and go through and complete it. It's a lot more investment of time, at least for me. So I definitely recommend you, if you like doing card sketches, check them out, check her website out. It's a lot of fun. Um, and then in the end of the year, or the end of the quarter, she will showcase everything and then pull out some winners. So once again, thank you so much for joining me. I do hope this has created some inspiration for you, or even just some happiness, joy, and whatnot while watching Valentine cards being created. And until the next time, have yourself a wonderful day and take care. Bye.